Hello people. Welcome to the community of the Growth Mindset podcast. Guys, if you are a first time listener, don't forget to subscribe on whichever platform you're listening from so that you don't miss on more interesting episodes coming up in following weeks. And for our daily listeners, here we are again with a new episode where we will interview another interesting personality from a unique industry and understand how they were able to accomplish this great level of success. Remember, this is a podcast where we learn easy, practical methods and tips that we can implement in our daily lives from the very best and the most successful people known today. Because as we all know, success leaves clues. And we the people having the growth mindset will use these clues to create a better, more fulfilling and a successful life. So, let the growth begin. Hello guys, our guest for today is Kamya Jani. Many people already know her, and for people who don't, she is a former news anchor and currently the chief traveling officer for Curly Tales and the host of Sunday Brunch with, where she interviews celebrities and talks about the love of traveling and food. This episode is all about traveling, food, how to get paid by traveling, what can women do to succeed, how Curly Tales started, and the personal success story of Kamya Jani. So, Let's go. Thank you so much for taking your time out and joining us on the Growth Mindset podcast. It is an utmost pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shivam. Yes. So, uh, Kamya, before we go ahead and dive into the interview, would you like to go ahead and tell us a little bit about your background as to where you're from, where were you born, your parents, education and all that good stuff? Yeah, sure. So, I've always been a Mumbai girl. Uh, so, I was born in Ghatkopar. spent my early childhood there then moved to chamber which is very close to ghatkopar and uh, born in a sindhi family i have two more siblings mm-hmm. and uh, my father has uh, you know he's always been an entrepreneur has a great business sense like most other sindhis do my mm-hmm. brothers also into and i wanted to explore an entrepreneurial streak that i may have uh, so i got married about 10 years ago moved to pawai yep. and that's about my first Life. but in terms of my professional life i was working i did journalism before i started working and uh, i then uh, you know wanted to of course get into tv anchoring and business news was my space at that point of time so i first mm-hmm. started working at cnbc then uh, at bloomberg and then at uh, et now that was my last stint so i had good mm-hmm. 10 years of uh, experience in wow. my profession so, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and i used to do work travel and lifestyle shows and which is when i thought that uh, i was really uh, enjoying the travel show that i was doing so i mm-hmm. thought okay let me explore more and just 3 years ago i quit my job and started a company called curly tales with my husband support uh, and uh, yeah this is where i am today i have a daughter who is 6 years old and uh, nice. i just try all the things together wow. so right now i live in Okay interesting now i while i was you know i i follow curly tales and you know basically one of my friends recommended me your profile when i was like you know i want to interview somebody from a travel industry so when i had a look at your profile it was really interesting to see you have 10 years of experience in you know being in news uh, and being a news anchor and then starting something travel you know querying it to the travel space and before that you while i was you know trying to learn more about you also see that you were an introvert you said back in the college days right so how did this shift happen from being an introvert to being yeah. A, yeah. a news tv anchor and then getting into curly tales what was the driving inspiration for you um uh, i i don't know what was the inspiration really but i always wanted to learn and uh, growing up you know there were so many inspiration and you would see people talk so confidently to everybody i i never thought i can do that um mm. even you know i went to a very simple school uh where i was probably very i was probably the smartest i felt like mm. that you know in my school back then but when i went to my college which was mm. in bandra i realized that okay wait there is a different world out there <laughs> people are smarter than me people can speak better than me people are good you know be it sports academics or 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 their vocational skills and i and i felt like okay now this is something i need to work on mm. and there's this concept 
constant, um, you know, I, I always want to keep learning. Mm. And just get better at myself, and I keep cha- and I and I'm someone who never, almost never feels satisfied with myself. Mm. You know, which which is a problem, uh, but it's very hard to please me with my own self. Even mm. today, when I watch videos and I watch, I'm like, okay, I could have done this better. Or if I look at somebody else's creation, I feel like, okay, they are better. Mm. But I don't envy. I just feel more and more inspired and motivated. to work on my skills even in the last 3 years of having kuri deals and we've made over like 1800 videos till date wow but even we we keep constantly evolving our strategy seeing how what more can we offer to the audience so yeah mm. i think constant evolution uh, is what i always strive for so while i was an introvert i had to work a lot on myself and challenge myself to open mm. up and and to do things that would make me uncomfortable just mm. so that i can you know come out of So you you're like a classic example of somebody who has the growth mindset right which not satisfied you set a high bar for yourself saying this is what i need to do to make sure i improve and i think putting yourself in that uncomfortable situation was the uh, was the reason behind you growing to what you are today right i hope I, that's the right <laughs> way to do it awesome no as far as i've interacted with these people that is a, a trait that i've observed in people and i've seen these guys do wonders now what what were some of the things that you used to do to you know become successful like some people read books some people like learning so what were your ways of learning how do you like to learn you know i i i always choose education over entertainment hmm to begin okay so even when i'm watching something on television I like to watch like documentaries. I like to watch travel shows. I like I like non-fiction. So mm. even in my books, I would choose non-fiction. Mm. Um, you want to see the kind of books I have bought? How to talk to anyone? Interesting. Um, or you know, or um, the public speaking skills. Or mm. I would get books on TED talks. Or yeah. how people. Would, and I think to to be able to get the attention of the audience while you are talking is True. one of the big skills. And and if I can master that, then I'll be good at every conversation that I hold. So I always, you know, that that's been my pattern. Mm. Another thing is, ever correct me once, I I will never repeat a mistake mm. as much as possible. I may make new mistakes, but I may not yeah. repeat mistakes. So I, I remember back then in school, um, my like I mentioned, my school in Ghatpur was very simple. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, even just couldn't speak. english that well oh okay and that came to me as well and when i went to another school in chambur and and i would make some grammatical mistakes while talking mm-hmm. and i remember laughed at once in a classroom and and i and i that's when i realized that okay i i took those embarrassments very seriously to work on myself mm-hmm. so while i could go out and ask anybody what mistake did i do and back then there was no google really to go out and check <laughs> ask my close friends what what mistake did i do and and mm. i would make sure that i'm not repeating the same mistakes of course as i grew up i made new grammatical mistakes <laughs> yeah you come to a point where where you know i've gotten better and even today i'm sure i must be making so many mistakes but i'm not embarrassed of them anymore i look at it as a learning interesting now what are some books that you said you read non fiction books right so which has been your favorite non fiction book so far uh i would say it's cliche but uh, the mm-hmm. secret wow okay interesting i've heard that uh, from a lot of from a lot of different people interesting when did you read that book uh i read it about 10 years ago actually wow okay so it's all I about 10 yeah mm-hmm. and right now i'm reading a book called um, ek guy uh, hmm. which is about the journey yes. of happiness yes and Uh, also the journey of souls i've just started that book mm-hmm. and uh, the monk who sold his ferrari yep. or the five robin sharma i've got i haven't started because aiming to wake up at 5 in this lockdown feels really hard it's going to be hard so, and basically what works for you is is the best thing right i mean there are a lot of people they say right there some of them are night owls some of them are mid wakers and some of them are the early risers like robin sharma says 5 am club like if somebody tells me to wake up at 5 am i know that's not my thing <laughs> though i can accomplish a lot afterwards but 5 am is not for me yeah but having said that i have in fact woken up for 5 at 5 am for about good 6 to 7 years of my life wow okay i was working now the first show i used to do was at 7 am 
and for it. which I have to wake up at five from Pawai, go to Lower Parel, and make it in time to the makeup room. Mm -hmm. And many times it's at six forty-five, and then rush to the. To the <laughs> studio. Interesting. Now, yeah. now a lot of people can definitely find your story when they research about you on Google, right? But tell us something that most people don't know about you, which is not there on on Google or anywhere else. One of the craziest travel stories. I know you've been over 35, 36 countries so far. Yeah, so about 40 countries now. But wow. The long yeah. The sort of and that number is not growing. But I'll tell you a story about Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, I had been to Turkey. It was uh, a solo trip. Mm -hmm. I was wow. all self shooting. It was with a group called ISEC. Uh, I don't know if you know of ISEC, where basically young students, uh, you know, have these exchange programs where students from India would go to different countries and th okay. those would come to India. Okay. So it was something like that. Now, I, I went in a capacity of a blogger uh, and I had to go and connect with the students and live with them. And most of them being 10 years, 20 years younger, not 20, but yeah, maybe 10 to 12 years younger than me because they're still studying. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, speaking to Isaac as a community or as with the boards, but students thought I was one of the students, right? Uh, <laughs> but I went there like doing a research sort of a thing and I was meant to share my, uh, I mean, they had to share their room with me mm -hmm. uh, because I was a student. So then uh, I, I, there were three cities that I had to cover in Turkey. So the first place where I went, those two girls came to pick me up. I spent the night with them. And it was more like me for me to understand how this process really works. Mm -hmm. uh, when I reached Istanbul after visiting, I went to three places. Bursa, um, uh, one more city in and then Istanbul. When I reached Istanbul, I was meant to share this room with this girl who never showed up uh, at, the, at the bus station to pick me up. And then that job was assigned to some other guy to come and pick me up. He came to pick me up at Istanbul and he took me to her house and said that, you know, she's not there. Uh, she's gone out somewhere, traveling somewhere else. She's gone to meet her parents, but you can go and live in her house. I said, she's not going to be there. Said, no, she's not going to be there. I have to go and live in her house without her. <laughs> and the minute I reached that house, there were clothes everywhere. And it was like a secluded building. My so you, you often come across that situation. Yeah. So I was a bit scared. Uh, and, and she had a cat in the house also. <laughs> so I think the neighbor was looking at so I, I was really scared. It was straight out of a horror film. I said, no, I, I need to get out of this place. Interesting. Now, see, you know the yeah. stigma around uh, women traveling alone. That's a solo traveling, right? Like, is it safe or not? How should women travel solo? Now, since you're a classic example of you're somebody who's been doing this, now, what do you recommend uh, for women when they are traveling solo? What are some things, checklists that they should be aware of so they're safe as well as also enjoying traveling solo? Uh, honestly, I, I don't see India to be extremely safe for mm -hmm. solo travelers. So mm -hmm. I would suggest start by traveling internationally because mm. the rules and laws are very strict internationally for anyone to mess up with you right but in mm. india that's not true so i wouldn't be 100 percent confident of traveling although i haven't had any experience that's been a bit unsafe solo mm. traveling yeah i haven't even done my solo travel has usually been with the videographer yes there have been very few trips where i have just gone by myself and i have done that internationally like i mentioned Mm -hmm. In a case like this, I think you should always have number one, two phones, not just one mm. phone. So you should have two phones with you. Okay. Uh, if, if one dies out, you can rely on the other phone. So that, that is one tip. It may be an expensive one, but maybe use a spare or a simple phone that can just help you make calls. Mm. Um, of course, definitely have your international roaming activated <laughs> and yeah. on the other phone, you can use a local SIM. So connectivity is one of the biggest concerns. Definitely have the police number safe on your phone. Uh, the other thing is that keep posting regularly on social media. And if you don't post for a couple of hours or mm. a couple of days, somebody can, you know, raise a red flag saying, hey, okay, hi, this is something that's, that's unusual, right? Correct. So that's another thing. Uh, but yeah, definitely see the connectivity is one of the biggest concerns. Have some equipment with you, which, which can help you defend or save mm. yourself. Yeah. Um, if you feel that it's not safe, it probably is not. So mm. don't venture out 
that it's not safe and don't don't act like okay no i know everything <laughs> and i I'm, i'm somebody who you can explore in the night i don't get scared so easily as mm-hmm. as a solo traveler but uh, it it all depends on how you are of course and have a brave front mm. i mean as you are brave and strong people will be afraid to mess up with you exactly that's i think uh, yeah the biggest uh, instrument of defense that you can carry in yourself exactly now you traveled solo right so uh, according to you why do you think traveling solo is important because i understand the importance of traveling solo i travel solo though i have not been out of india but i have traveled to a lot of cities in india so i know it it kind of you know gives you a new perspective you understand yourself better but according to you let's say if women go out travel solo what are some benefits that they can get by traveling solo um you know it's i think it's very individualistic you know i wouldn't mm-hmm. say that all should go out and travel solo you should be comfortable spending time with yourself and if mm. you can do that in your house for one full day without feeling the need to touch your phone or or uh, wanting to talk to your friend is when you should do that otherwise you may want to return from your trip in two days <laughs> true so, i feel like i have a love affair with travel mm-hmm. and when i'm traveling i don't bothered by somebody else's plans a lot of times when i'm traveling with my friends or even for my or with my husband for that matter his perspective of traveling is extremely different than mine mm-hmm. okay now i may want to go visit in three four places and he may want to just sit at a cafe and chill and if i am forcing him to do this and if he's forcing me to do that it's not going to be a good idea for the two of us exactly so it's it's best to firstly either find a companion who's extremely compatible with you in terms of mm. uh, your opinion or a travel companion whoever that may be but when you're traveling solo it gives you a new perspective of of just being with yourself it's not about connecting with others it's all of that is temporary all of that is friends but but just to enjoy your own company i think is one of the m- most um, fruitful experience Uh, yeah. you know you may want to do it once or want to repeat it or, or it's, it can be very addictive too it's addictive for me <laughs> yep i love it i can so, feel you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, yeah i think even for women i think we are we just have such a uh, tight routine and especially for married women in laws there are parents there are husbands husband sorry <laughs> you just have, one, have kids but there are expectations around you all the time and traveling helps you break away from the routine and mm. just just yourself it's just you at that point of time and i recommend this to a lot of aunties and moms more than mm-hmm. anybody else yeah. they need a more than the young girls out there i think the young girls are already i mean they create this self pressure for themselves with instagram mm-hmm. or social media or their peer pressure mm-hmm. but i think more than anybody else our moms and aunties need it they, once they go out traveling so but they just not so confident to step out you know yeah yeah so i think it's it's mostly because they've been at home for a very long time and now when after a few years you tell them to go out and you know face the world or have a new perspective have a look at new things they kind of shy back a little saying you know what will people say now i'm married I, right so that that could yeah. be one of the reasons now since you bought this up this is a very important topic as well now let's say a woman uh uh obviously as you said they have a husband kids and let's say uh, a lot of women are also having jobs or running their own businesses now how do you balance this you're doing this quite well from a good amount of years but what is your advice to other women who can do the same i don't know if you got a chance to watch this video about my journey where where i have said very clearly that if you are ever given a choice between choosing your own happiness and somebody else's happiness choose you choose you. your own happiness because if if you are happy only then you will be able to exude happiness to others mm. there is no right balance uh, to be honest with you mm. there is no way that you can have it all and and i know they say that women can have it all i'll be honest see uh, a, a woman we have two aspects to her life her work life and her personal life if she always gives her personal life more priority than her work life um at the organization level they will sense it and they will give her lesser mm. opportunity true if a woman is constantly giving priority to her work life she'll get to hear a lot of tantrums at home a lot of taunts and her energy levels will always be pulled down mm. you know um, and and they may the family may not be happy while she may excel really well in her in her professional life correct so a woman has to be strong because one mm. side of her life is going to be a bit disappointed yeah. and if you're trying to 
everything then you will not excel in either hmm okay what i feel and then when you're not excelling at either you are the one who's disappointed and your disappointment is going to show in your work life and in your personal life too correct so choose yourself understand what is it that you enjoy the most and trust mm-hmm. me be you the world will adapt so don't compromise don't trade off authenticity for approval so mm. being authentic for other people don't trade that off it's it's rare to to be authentic so whatever you like be honest and pursue that interesting that's a good advice now going back to uh, your life right you started curly tales uh, 3 years ago as you said now for women there are a lot of women as well as even men that want to you know get paid for traveling they have a thing for traveling they want to make money but either they don't have cash or they want to make money by traveling so for people who want to make money by traveling what is your advice to them like let's say any three practical tips that can help people make money from traveling uh you may think that making money from traveling is a very exciting uh, employment opportunity it's not very easy mm. and uh, there is a huge price that you have to pay for it too it is not very uh, easy to do this and i'm sure that the queue is long where people want to do this um so number one thing uh, firstly you got to be extremely passionate about while you may think traveling and shooting is fun it is work so when i go out for my work trips i really wake up in the morning and i sleep late in the night because i'm constantly uh, shooting collecting the best visuals and i don't feel tired it's only because i'm passionate about it True. uh that kind of work shows in my videos which is where um, the audience gets engaged where they mm. want to you know, go to the same place and with that audience engagement is when i can get brands to pay me to mm. travel to that place with your video so that's the gap that i found right mm. which i which but everybody likes to travel and i would like to travel too i had to figure out what different can i bring to the table mm. so you want to find the gap what is it that the the what is it that the um, audience needs right now be it the mm. audience or in case in the realm of travel what is it that people are not doing So mm. I saw that there were a lot of articles being written about travel but there weren't too many videos that were being done mm. even if there are blogs who are going out there it's more about their personal trip where they are going or it's yeah, more right. about uh, it's more about them than about the place you mm. know so I wanted to find the right balance between me and the place together because a brand is more interested in showcasing its place than me right correct because that me can be changing so you got to find and bridge that gap and find mm. out what is it that you can offer that is not really there in the market there are a lot of travel bloggers out there right now yes so if you want to enter into this space you got to know what different can you do hmm interesting so this is one major advice oh. now out of all the countries that you visited right kamya which has been your favorite experience which country according to you has been the best uh i fell in love with lisbon in mm. portugal yeah okay I felt a great connection uh, with that city. Uh, in Europe, most cities look alike. There will be mm-hmm. a city center. Uh, you know, there will be those cafes, and uh, there will be a nice commercial place as well with lots of lights and you know, like a bit glitzy. But Lisbon for me, I think, was really different. You know, it had nice. Uh, Portugal, you know, nice history. I don't know. It also had a bit of Goa vibes. I felt. <laughs> I remember I had actually gone there with my family. Hmm. Uh, but of course, with family, there are kids, there are elders, and they all have their own restrictions about how much they want to travel and how much they can take. So I remember waking up at six in the morning while everyone was asleep, just so that I can feel the city. Uh, so six. to 10 o'clock till everybody was just about getting ready to go out i went out alone to explore the city wow and i just walking in the entire city uh, went to all the touristy locations and the non touristy ones <laughs> uh, i loved it nice tram service you can just take that tram for 2 and a half to 3 euros and just see the entire city so it was nice uh, it has stayed with me for really long interesting now if i could ask you right since you've traveled a lot of different countries what is the realization that you've got it could be in terms of happiness what life is about everybody is seeking happiness i feel you mm-hmm. know and everybody wants to have a good time out there what i've realized about my own self is that 
uh, I feel the happiest when I'm traveling. Mm. So I don't, I don't believe in any idol worship. You will not see me doing any puja. You will not mm. see me. I mean, I believe in the energy, but not as much as Correct. any particular god, so to say. Mm -hmm. And I feel there's God in nature. True. So I think you know, मुझे कुदरत में खुदा दिखता है. Yeah. So I think that there is God everywhere with sunrise and with every sunset. I feel like there is presence of God there. And if there is a sun somewhere, I want to sit there and I want to. I just want to see that. And I feel. For me, that's like the magical sight, and and I can see sunset from my house also, wow. which makes me feel really good. And and as as much as possible, and I go and sit in my balcony to see that. But I I love uh, you know I just think the nature. Every time I see a sunset or a sunset rise, you know, my heart expands in the worship of the nature. Interesting. So, so that has been my realization that mm. and. Extremely happy when I'm when I'm just outside, just looking. Even looking at trees makes me feel happy. <laughs> Interesting. So as you said, right? It basically depends from a person to person as to where they find happiness. And as mm -hmm. a lot of I know, as cliche as it sounds, people say happiness chase happiness. But end of the day, chasing happiness is not basically a destination, right? It's a process that you every single day you can be happy. You can count yourself what grateful you know you what grateful you are for. There are so many blessings that we have around us. Rather than thinking on things that we don't have, focusing on what we have actually will give us better perspective of life, and we can be more happier. It's not yep. just pursuing your dreams. It's not just about the profession that you are in. Now, I may be in a dream profession, but there have been moments when I don't feel fulfilled, and when mm. I don't, I, I these books. I I move. I I I move to these motivational videos. I need to understand what can I do to feel fulfilled. And mm. I don't know if you feel fulfilled all the time. So there are phases when you feel fulfilled. There are phases when you feel shallow. There are days when you feel empty, or there's a void that you need to fill. So I think yeah, it's a part of life. But you got to enjoy wherever you are. Interesting. That's a very important point you mentioned, right? Saying uh, you're not inspired all the time. You're not enjoying all the time. You're not happy all the time. At that point of time, you need to go back to you know things that can actually inspire you or motivate you. to get you back on track now i think that's for you is going to nature or reading books am i guessing right yeah yeah absolutely absolutely okay. interesting yeah. traveling definitely also watching my old videos makes me extremely happy <laughs> you send me to travel without my phone or without my camera where i can't record i may not enjoy the experience as much <laughs> so I have to document so that's another thing good mm -hmm. or bad i don't know but i definitely have this Think about documenting and recording it, whatever mm -hmm. I am experiencing. Yeah, I think it's more like keeping those memories alive, right? Like once you go back and you think, because I remember I have, when I went to Ladakh solo uh, three years ago, I have all the pictures, and when I look at it, I smile, right? Automatically, that smile comes up, saying, "Oh my God, I was yeah. there." The, all those memories recollect. So I think that's that's Absolutely. what you're referring to, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong in that. I mean, <laughs> everybody does it, I believe. Now, uh, going back to your. Uh, new events that i've seen that you started on your website right curly tales uh you also host another event called a sunday brunch with as well as you've also started a podcast right so would you like to tell us uh what these two events are like what do you do on these events so what happens on sunday brunch is uh, we invite a celebrity mm -hmm. and have a meal with the celebrity and talk about food and travel preferences which is curly tales core so mm -hmm. while everybody wants About the gossip and the relationship, or the new upcoming films. For us, it's the lighter side of things, which is food and travel. And I think food and travel that connects almost everybody. Most yep. people love. There are very few who don't. Food is, of course, relished by yes. everyone. Uh, so even the celebrities are always on a strict diet. Mm -hmm. Something that they always like do, right? So you always yep. talk to them about fashion points. What is their favorite dish? uh their the favorite uh, you know dish made by their mom or the favorite street food or favorite restaurant and similarly favorite destination as well yeah. any embarrassing thing happening during travel so that's the whole uh, line of thought for sunday brunch the other podcast as you obviously you know how the podcast scene is rising mm -hmm. and right now you can't go we get looking exactly. at doing mana safar Which is more like a virtual tour to different places. We created mm. virtual tours for Goa. While 
see but here you can hear the beach waves the sound uh, the breeze mm. sound or you really feel like you are in that spot with a voice over where the anchor or the host is taking you to different places in mm. and around in the outside of that interesting now uh, i did i did not get the opportunity to sit and watch uh, the sunday brunch with but i did see that you host a lot of uh, interesting celebrities i saw you were interviewing virat kohli ajay devgan and kajol uh you were interviewing who who else were there saif ali khan so out of yeah so out of all these people that you met right uh who do you resonate with the most who did you find uh you know really like on the same page as you somebody which you enjoyed it was like a very natural conversation i'll be honest i remember mm-hmm. interviewing virat kohli mm-hmm. coming I, this happened in delhi and mm-hmm. when i came back to my hotel room I was jumping with joy because it was such a wonderful interaction which mm-hmm. I didn't expect uh, and and he's so humble and he's so sweet to talk to mm-hmm. and I remember the manager uh, had created so much hype around you know don't ask this question don't ask that question and there were like 10 people around with security but when I sat in front of him and we chatted uh, I mean he couldn't stop laughing at my questions or the conversation <laughs> having i asked him bachpan mein to aapne bahut chole bhature pele honge and there were memes doing the rounds with that line you know <laughs> so i think it's really good like the manager told me don't talk about anushka at all mm-hmm. and honestly i didn't ask that about anushka he started talking about her like i am his long lost friend <laughs> it was wonderful chatting with virat kohli mm-hmm. also saif ali khan i have always been his fan but he was in a bit of a rush that day uh, and sometimes you are unable to you know connect mm. that well with told that karina kapoor is waiting downstairs for him so please mm. do it quick you have only 2 minutes you have only 3 minutes and and in that time you know you got to be extremely calm and correct conversation in the rapport with your more than that person yeah because i understand you know once they once you have given a deadline and then if you want to be calm at that point of time it becomes difficult for them to involve in the conversation and for you also to you know respond in that similar way uh, there is one last question that i want to ask right now this is with respect to your own experience now we were talking about fulfillment right and as my podcast is all about it is not about making not, not just money but creating a life that you find fulfilling and satisfied so if you could give let's say uh, one advice for people that can help them lead a, a fulfilled uh, and a better life what advice are you going to give that um see i think everybody has different goals for themselves mm-hmm. everybody has different passion points everybody you know another thing i hear from people is they don't know what they are passionate about true yes and i and i feel very very sad uh like i mean i i wish i could help them identify what their passion is mhm i think if you don't have a passion it's very hard to live life with with full gusto with with a junoon yes. you know and if you live life with some passion you enjoy the process of living your life True. so it's not a destination it's a journey mm-hmm. uh i remember jab raat ko sab so jate hain uh mm-hmm. open my laptop to work mm. i i love so nobody is asking me to work i want Correct. to work by my choice and of course i sleep less because i have to cover up in other aspects of my mm. life but find something for yourself which makes you feel fully alive mm. or something like there's a flow and a dhun you know that there, there's mm. a flow and immerse yourself in that kind of work and it's hard for people to find out what they are passionate about for them maybe they need to work harder to find out what they are passionate about hmm. once you know what you're passionate about you hmm. got to give some purpose to your passion hmm. so why do i love travel i need to give some purpose to my travel and right now i think earlier it was all about building a community hmm. earlier it was all about getting more brands it earlier hmm. it was all about um, you know making more money Uh, or getting more followers mm. but i think these things matter as much as you grow true what i want to do now is is actually putting my skill set to some use by which i mean that i want to give a purpose to my passion by if with my traveling if i can change somebody's life 
I'd be happy with that. If with my skill sets, I can I can help or extend a helping hand to that person. Like I want to do, I have just started a show called I Love My India, which was before the lockdown. Mm-hmm. And right now, because of the lockdown, I can't really travel. Can but I- now, as, as I have so much time during the lockdown, I want to continue with this show called I Love My India, where I want to visit the remote villages of India hmm. and do something. Do something with them. Do something for the for the kids there. You know, um, I don't know. I'm yet to figure out what. But I but I want to get I'm going to get my hands dirty and find out what is it that makes me feel fulfilled. But I want wow. to do it something for others and not for myself. Yes. I think that should be very kind to me. Whatever I wanted, whatever I thought of, I'm just being given like this. <laughs> now I want to do something for others. Awesome, and I'm I'm sure you are gonna have that impact because I've seen a few uh, images of yours wherein you I think you were in Rajasthan or so in village, uh, which I yeah. found really interesting. I'm sure uh, you we're gonna see more of that. Now, uh, sure. this is one question, Kamya, that I ask almost all the guests on my podcast. Right? For this, you'll have to imagine. Right? Now, you you have a daughter. Right? Now, let's say after thirty, forty years from now, you're old and it's time for you to pass on. Right? Leave this world. and you got to give two advice to your daughter it could only two advice it could be personal professional anything but only two what those two advice are going to be for your daughter um the number one advice to her would be always do the right thing okay now this may sound very simple as right thing i'm sure a lot of people don't know what is right or what is yep. wrong i would just tell her if there is anything that she has a feeling of hiding it hmm. or not anyone or keeping it as a secret which means it's it's wrong hmm so don't do anything that you may want to hide correct whatever you choose to do you should be you should be comfortable telling the world that i did it and if it's if it's right in your eyes it doesn't matter if it's wrong in others eyes hmm. yes it's right in your eyes please please uh, you know you should feel comfortable owning it up so yeah. never do anything for which you may want to hide or tell mm. a lie mm. you know interesting do, do the right uh, so that that is one test that i put to myself always whether it's right or wrong uh-huh whether if my parents are watching me should i would i be doing this or not mm. is the question that i tell the other thing that advice i would give to her would be uh, i have all thing already mentioned sometime in this podcast but i will repeat it choose yourself so find what mm. makes you happy and go all out for it don't worry about the world uh, do do anything that makes your soul dance that makes your soul feel happy do it you will be able to exude so much happiness to people around you awesome uh perfect uh kamya thank you so much you know for taking your time out out of your busy schedule and joining us on the podcast and showing your story explaining how you were able to achieve this i'm sure a lot of people who are listening to the podcast would be able to understand learn from your experience and implement those in their lives so that they could create a fulfilling life that's all we are here for i hope so thank you so much wonderful chatting with you viewers or the listeners enjoy this conversation indeed indeed